What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. This is WWE Off The Script. This is episode number 33 for your Saturday morning. This is part number two, week ending October 5th, 2014. Break out them hoodies, break out them pumpkin ales, man. It's time for the fall season. It's fucking chilly as a motherfucker over here in New York City. I don't know, man. Starting to miss summer already, but those pumpkin ales will definitely ease the pain. Thank you guys for joining me this Saturday morning, wherever you may be, for the number one source in WWE news and rumors right here on YouTube.com. This is off the script. If you guys missed yesterday's episode, biblical, biblical announcement from the guys over at Chair Shot Reality. If you guys missed the announcement, it's in the opening clip of part one. Go and check that out immediately. If you're not subscribed to CSR's YouTube, link is down below. If you don't know who CSR or the guys over at Chair Shot Reality, if you don't know who they are, shame on you. WrestleZone.com at Chair Shot Reality. Link is down below. The number one talk show for professional wrestling on the internet. If you guys want the reality of the wrestling business from three great minds, those are the men to deliver it to you. Go and check those guys out. Show them some love. JD from NY sent you over there, alright? Number two, if you guys missed any of my previous WWE videos, off the script yesterday, off the script last week, my epic Monday Night Raw rant regarding the shitty direction of Monday Night Raw and my my way to fix things for WWE on Monday nights. Go and check that out. Everything you need is down below. And finally, guys, Joe Cronin. If you guys want added additional wrestling content, go over to Joe's channel and show him some support. Links to his Twitter and YouTube page are linked down below in the description. Now, let's get into it, guys. It's going to be a short episode for part two. Not much news this week, but I got big fucking news the remainder of the weekend. Big news. I got tomorrow, WW2K15. All right, I got news on gameplay modes and everything regarding that for next gen. But part two, The Ascension. My guys in The Ascension. When are they going to be brought up? How are they going to be brought up to the WWE main roster? When will they be debuting? Who will they be debuting with? Well, if you watch Monday Night Raw, you've seen that Luke Harper is going to be given a push after airing, after WWE add new vignettes from the Wyatt family on Raw, where Bray Wyatt set Luke Harper free. Word from backstage at Raw this week is that the group will indeed be going their separate ways. I know that is probably going to upset a lot of you fans, but the Wyatt family will be no more. It is not confirmed that any of the Wyatt family members will be getting a big push out of the split. The only thing confirmed is that Bray, uh, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan will be working apart very soon, instead of together as a unit. There's also no word on which, if any, Wyatt family member will be turning babyface, but there has been speculation on Bray Wyatt making a face turn, a babyface turn. The idea for the Wyatt family is to have Luke Harper split off from the group. Apparently the plan is for the Wyatts uh, to slowly break up, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan will stay as heels, but it's possible that Harper and Rowan will feud against each other. The idea for Bray Wyatt is for him to adopt the Ascension as his new crew, the new Wyatt family. No word yet on if this means that Eric Rowan will stay on board with Bray or if he will become a singles wrestler. This is what you gotta do. WWE needs to know this. They can't be this fucking blind. Luke Harper, besides Bray Wyatt, we're excluding him because we know he's a beast, okay? Out of the two, if you're going to compare Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, Luke Harper has the most talent. Justin Labar speaks highly of Luke Harper, okay? I see a lot, uh, you know, a lot of talent and potential in Luke Harper as a singles guy if they mold him correctly. He could be a monster heel. Big guy, moves very, very good in the ring, very swiftly. He knows what he's doing, all right? But out of the two, you know, Luke Harper is the more stronger of the two. I would keep Eric Rowan in the Wyatt family. It's a role that he plays very well. Uh, I think if he gets split off, he will eventually sink. He's not going to swim, okay? I, I would love if Luke Harper and Eric Rowan actually stayed together as a tag team, to be quite honest with you. The more tag teams, the better. I'm all about rebuilding the tag team division, especially with the Ascension coming on up, rumored to be with Bray Wyatt. That would be fantastic. 
You can have the Ascension feud with Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. That would be great. I would love to see that. But if you're going to, you know, move Luke Harper on, I would keep Eric Rowan in the Wyatt family just to keep him relevant. If he's going to be on his own, I don't think WWE is going to mold him uh, correctly and nurture him correctly. I think he's going to sink and forget about swimming. He's going to drown and that's it. It's going to be done and over with. Luke Harper is going to swim. He's going to float. He's going to fucking, uh, you know, excel as a singles guy. That's just the way I see it. But that is the plan for the Ascension, uh, you know, possibly joining the YFL. I mean, don't take this for truth, okay? Everything you you hear here, everything I read to you, take it with a grain of salt. This is what is being reported. Uh, I, you know, there's no really, there's no other way to bring up the Ascension. These guys are unique. They're they're different. All right, you're just not gonna just debut them and put them on Monday Night Raw and put them in the tag team division. Hey guys, with the Ascension, we're we're gonna take the tag team titles now. They gotta make a fucking impact. Bray Wyatt's not doing anything right now. WWE Creative doesn't know what to do with Bray Wyatt. Why not put them with the Ascension? I think they would gel very well. I like the idea of that. Let's see what WWE does, uh, does with it. But the Ascension right now, Bray Wyatt, the Ascension, uh, rumored to be the new Wyatt family. Luke Harper going off on his own. Eric Rowan, kind of the odd man out. They don't know whether to make him a singles uh, with Luke Harper or have him stick with the Wyatt family. I think him sticking with the Wyatt family is the best idea there. So take that with a grain of salt. That is very interesting to report. Let me know what you guys think about that. How would you bring up the Ascension with Bray Wyatt and form the new Y family? Let me, let me know what your comments uh, down below. It should be stressed that this is strictly a rumor. Okay? This is strictly a rumor. If this was true, I might as well fucking grab a gun and shoot myself and never watch WWE again. Okay? I won't watch much of anything again if I put a gun to my head. But you guys get my fucking drift. Okay? It should be stressed that this is strictly a rumor. But Reddit user Mets fan forever says the Bella Twins will be competing in a Hell in the Cell match at next month's pay-per-view. Or this month's pay-per-view, rather. All right. Mets fan forever, number one. He's a Mets fan. He doesn't know much of anything to begin with if he's, if he's fucking a Mets fan. But he said that he is a verified insider and broke the news of CM Punk and AJ Lee getting married but was wrong about AJ being pregnant. He did break the news of JTG's WWE release before WWE actually announced it and revealed several show scripts in the past. However, the Bellas competing in a cell match seems highly unlikely and should be taken as strictly a rumor. Please, for the love of God, do not put the Bellas inside a hell in a cell. If that is the case, you should abolish and vanquish the entire pay-per-view after this year. Because nobody will ever look at Hell in a Cell the same ever again. It will be a fucking joke. It will be a laughing stock. It will be the kid in the back of the fucking class who's a fucking geek. Pimples on his face. Virgin. Gets no ass. Is a loner. Sits alone at the lunch table. That's what fucking Hell in a Cell is going to be, man. Exactly. Please. Just envision that. Just envision that fucking, that fucking degenerate sitting in the back of the class. He's got no friends, he's got fucking pimples all over his face, can't get a girl to fucking look at him. That's what Hell in the Cell is going to be, man. Seriously. If the Bella Twins are inside Hell in the Cell, nobody on this fucking planet will take Hell in the Cell seriously again. What are you going to, what are you going to have Bellas climbing the fucking, the, the Hell in the Cell? You're going to have them bleed inside Hell in the Cell? Hell in the Cell is for men. Hell in the Cell is for blow-offs. Hell in the Cell is where the fucking men separate themselves from the rest of fucking humanity, man. That's the fucking match Undertaker and Mankind built. Shawn Michaels built his fucking, half some of his legacy off this shit. Undertaker built most of his fucking, you know, Undertaker built this fucking match, man. Foley made a fucking legacy off this match. You're gonna put the Bell Twins inside Hell in the Cell for what? For five minutes? What's going to happen in five minutes inside a Hell in a Cell that can't happen in the fucking back in the locker room on WWE TV? I don't understand. Absolutely fucking ridiculous idea. If WWE does this in any way, shape, or form inside a Hell in a Cell, they should be put out of business. They should not even fucking have nobody watching them. Plain and simple. So please, please, for the love of God, I hope this does not happen. All right? Moving on. It's only a rumor. Just take it with a grain of salt. WWE issued the following in regards to the Big Show pulling down the Russian flag in the segment with Rusev and Lana on this week's Raw. We at the WWE would like to apologize to the Russian people for the incident on Monday Night Raw that could have been constructed uh, or construed as disrespectful 
to their nation's flag. Oh, cry me a fucking river. You, you didn't mind it when you were putting it in the script, right? So why do it? End this fucking bullshit with, uh, you know, you have to have an American figure fighting the Russian fucking terrorists. Come on, man. The guy who hates America, it's over and done with. Just give Rusev the United States title and build him up from there, please. Enough of this fucking bullshit. Enough of the big show. Get him off my TV. He's a waste of fucking roster space. He does nothing to enhance the product. He puts me to sleep in every segment that he fucking wrestles in. Nobody wants to see him on pay-per-view. Nobody wants to see him against Rusev because he's going to fucking lose regardless. It's too predictable. It's fucking boring. Just get him off my TV. That's it. You don't need him. You don't need him for anything. Put him, with, put him with Hornswoggle in a backstage fucking segment for five minutes. I don't give a fuck. Get him off my TV. Alright, whatever. Put him on main event. Put him on superstars. Put him on Saturday morning slam. I don't give a fuck. Just get him off my TV on Mondays. That's all I care about. That's all I want. Just get him off my TV. Done. Finally, to end this short part of part two. I'm in some fucking mood right now, folks. I got a lot of energy. Drank a couple of beers. I'm good to go. Alright. But finally... It is expected that Finn Balor, 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 however, however the fuck you want to announce him, um, you know, this is, uh, this is Prince Devitt, okay, by the way, for you guys who don't know, Finn Balor and Hideo Itami, aka Kenta, will be brought up to WWE's main roster before most of the other NXT talents that are currently in developmental. While Itami came from w or came to WWE, uh, because he really wanted to do it, uh, Baylor was not brought in to spend a few years in developmental. Both men will have a run in NXT because all talents do, but we could see them on the main roster before 90% of the other NXT talents that will be getting called up. So, Prince Devitt, a.k.a. Finn Baylor, and Hideo Itami, a.k.a. Kenta, they will be brought up uh, faster than everyone else down there simply because they have the most experience out of anybody else, they don't need they don't need training. They don't need honing of the skills. Itami could use some, um, you know, some tips on you know speaking the language a little bit better. I have not seen uh, Finn Balor uh, yet, but um, I'm very excited to see both of these guys on TV. I got to start watching NXT. I missed the last couple of weeks um, since take uh, take over, so I got to watch up and catch up and see what's going on. I, I think Kenta made his debut. I'm not sure against two yet. If you guys want to fill me in and. Spoil it for me. Please do so down below in the comments. But um, these guys are going to be brought up quicker than everybody else. Quicker than uh, Kevin Steen. Quicker than Tyler Breeze, Adrian Neville, Sami Zayn. Even though all these guys deserve a main roster spot. You, you got to bring these guys up to the main roster when it makes sense. You just can't bring them up and just, you know, have them fucking go out on TV. And there's no storyline for them. There's no, there's no creative behind uh, their character. You, you got to bring these guys up with a reason. All right, that's what Trip. That's what Triple H wants to do. He wants to bring these guys up with a reason. We know these guys can wrestle. We know these guys are better than anything that's on TV right now. I'm sure of it. But there has to be a reason for them to be there. So hopefully WWE can be creative and come up with something decent for us to watch and bring these guys up and have it make sense. That's all I hope for. That's all we can hope for. So Finn Balor, it, uh, Hideo Tommy, aka Kenta, Prince Devitt. They're going to be brought up to the main roster quicker than everybody else because they got the most experience. Like I said, Kenta just needs uh, some English help and speaking the language a little bit better. So that's that's that, guys. But um, I'm going to have news tomorrow on uh, WW2K15, my career mode reveal. I got the full details on that. So if you guys are interested in WW2K15, uh, tune into part three tomorrow on Off the Script. And I also got news on WWE payoffs, how are the wrestlers being paid now that the WWE Network is uh, holding their pay-per-views, how much are they getting paid uh, from actual pay-per-view revenue. Not good from what I'm reading. Uh, I got news on Santino Morella. He expects to be back on WWE TV soon. Please go away and never show your face again. And I got news on Kurt Angle. Where is he going to sign? Sometime this month he's going to have a press conference and let you guys know when he's going to sign who he's going to sign with. I got all the latest information on Kurt Angle and whether he's going back to TNA, whether he's going with Jeff Jarrett, or if he's coming back home to WWE. So look forward to that on part three, guys. I'm out. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like on your way out the door. It greatly helps out my channel. Thank you for watching. If you missed any of my previous content, links are down below. If you're not following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206, CSR 250th with Vince Russo. Go and check out the preview video in part one if you missed it. Until part three, guys, I'm out. This is JD. And I'll talk to you all very soon.